I've written up here projectile motion. Projectile motion is sort of what we're going to get into next. And a lot of chapter four is dedicated to, ch to projectile motion. Um, all projectile motion is is a special example of 2D kinematics. And so that's why we spend a lot of time, because it's a good example um, of the stuff we've been learning. So the, the reason it's special is because it's motion uh, that has a constant acceleration. <clears throat> All right, which is what we need. Um, but the constant acceleration uh, is, is always in the, I guess we'll say, we can say the y direction, but let's say the up and down direction. Or specifically, let me say it's just down. All right, so projectile motion is just like free fall, which we talked about in 1D, except now we throw in the added complexity of having, uh, having something happening in the horizontal as well. All right, so projectile motion applies to shooting basketballs through a hoop, through baseball, hitting home runs. I mentioned cannonballs on that one day. Um, what else? Skydivers. Uh, like, I don't know. All sorts of other things. Professors jumping off buildings to commit suicide. This sort of thing, okay? Um, <laughs> all the things you'd be interested in. Now, <clears throat> um, like free fall, though, uh, we have a couple of assumptions. All right, we're ignoring air resistance. And we're losing our pen again. All right. Now, again, no air resistance applies. Can you remember when this applies? So I, said it, I said it a couple times sort of in passing. But when, when is air resistance a good assumption? So it's a good assumption for slow moving, uh, and I'll add dense objects. All right, so dense objects like balls or rocks and uh, slow moving as in the speed at which a human could throw something. So that, that's usually when no air resistance is, is good, when you can neglect air resistance. Um, another another uh, similarity, actually, between uh, projectile motion and free fall is the horizontal component of the velocity is constant. And while it was, it was constant, it was certainly constant in free fall, it was constant at zero. Uh, but now it's constant at some other value, but still constant. So that's good. So that makes life a little bit simpler. <coughs> um, the vertical, now just like in free fall, the vertical velocity is always changing. And so that's why it makes it a little bit interesting. And so in the vertical, we have an acceleration, I'll call it a sub y. What's the acceleration in the y direction? for a projectile motion? 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's always going to be down. So it's a constant acceleration. So we have a nice 2D uh, motion problem. Acceleration is always down. All right. Uh, I have a few tips that you can use when applying, when, when trying to solve these sorts of problems. Tips for projectile motion. Uh, first tip, so when an object reaches uh, the peak, so when an object reaches the peak of its trajectory, Worked so well for the first half. All right, so when it reaches the, the peak of its trajectory, what do you suppose the y component of the velocity is? All right, so it's going up, and then it's coming back down. It's right here at the top. All right, good, it's zero, All right? Because it's turning around. When it's turning around, the velocity has to be zero for just that little instant in time. You guys learned something 
We talked about that the other day. I'm so proud. Nice work. All right, number two. Um, okay. In the case, in the, in the special case of the special case, if the um, starting and that's bad. Ending heights are the same. All right, so you launch the projectile and it lands at the same height. Um, then the time it takes to go up is equal to the time it takes to go down. <clears throat> All right, so it takes just as long to make the first half of the, of the motion, so it goes up, hits the peak, same amount of time to go from the peak back to the ground. In addition to that, or as a consequence of that, um, if you look at the absolute value of the initial velocity of the projectile, it's going to be equal to the absolute value of the final velocity. All right, so the magnitude of the velocities will be the same. All right, so you launch it, it goes up at the same velocity as it comes down just in the other direction, All right, or a slightly different direction. I've already stated this, but it's sort of important. The horizontal velocity is uh, this is the horizontal. I'm sorry. This should be component. This should be correct. Component of the velocity. Component. All right. The horizontal component of the velocity is constant. I've said it. I'm saying it again because I don't want you to forget it. Now this can, remembering that can make life really easy on problems. You know, you're like, oh, you, get, you gave me the initial velocity, well, then I already have the, the final velocity in the x direction or something like that. Um, but it's not always obvious, and that's why I brought the skateboard. Let's see how I can demonstrate this. And I'm totally going to fall. Because <laughs> it's not because I'm a bad skateboarder, which I am, but I put a basket on the skateboard for another purpose. So I'm probably going to bite it. I skateboarded like when I was six. It was the last time I did it. Whoa! I'm totally going to bite it. I think I can skateboard and play with the ball at the same time. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skateboard. I'm going to try to skateboard. Uh, and the skateboard I have because I'm going to move it at a constant velocity in theory. Okay? And then I'm going to try to drop the ball or throw the ball. All right? So let's say I, I start moving and I drop the ball straight up. I just drop it straight down. All right? Do you think it's going to end up in front of me, behind me, right back in my hand? Behind me? I heard behind me. Who says in front of me? Who says right back in my hand? Danielle, right? Yeah. You're shaking your head at all three. No, I said the first one. Okay, sorry. All right, so it's going to be behind me. So let's, let's see if we can make it happen. All right, here we go. Don't fall, don't fall. All right, what did you see? I'll try to do it again. I'll make it bounce a little bit higher. Go faster. That'll end well, yeah. Get out of class early. All right, what happened to it? For the most part, it went back in my hand. I'd say it went a little bit behind me, but it didn't go behind me because its motion took it behind me. It went behind me because it hit the ground and there's friction on the ground. Okay? So if I do the same thing, this time I'll throw it up, and this is I wanted to do the second so I can actually learn on a skateboard first. Uh, so I'll throw it straight up. I'm going to try to throw it straight up in the air. All right, so if I throw it straight up in the air right now, it comes back down and lands in my hand. All right, let's try to let's try to move. Woo, woo. All right, what did you see? What did you observe? I could go backwards too. All right, it came right back down into my hand. Why? Why in physics language? Why? Why in physics language? The acceleration is the same. What acceleration? What was that? Share is my velocity. OK, that's pretty close. Velocity is a good word. What do you mean by share? We have the same velocity, and my velocity wasn't changing. I wasn't accelerating on the skateboard. The projectile, this, this projectile motion, the projectile, the ball, it's projectile motion. It's, it's x component of the velocity 
remains constant. All right, so I throw it up in the air. It initially had the same velocity as I had. Since it's a projectile, when it came down, it still had a constant velocity in the x direction. All right, it wasn't accelerating. All right, and there's no air resistance at that. Yes, so if you did that in a car, it would, you would never catch it. But again, projectile motion, so we're ignoring, uh, we're ignoring the air resistance. So that's why I rewrote three here, because it seems easy, but it's not always obvious. Okay, so that, that's what was happening here. All right. OK, so those are my tips. Let's, uh, let's just jump into it, uh, an example. Now, um, we, we make the case for projectile motion as sort of a, you know, a special example of projectile motion. No, I'm sorry, as a special example of 2D kinematics. But it's no different. I mean, we just have, you know, we have a set value for the acceleration. It's constant in the x direction. It's, it's constant at nine, negative 9.8 in the y direction. But other than that, it's the same type of problem. So you've already seen an example. So now you're gonna, you guys are going to do this one. So I want to know how far the ball flies. Let me, let me give you a little bit. Uh, just start off with a drawing here. So here's the ball. Looks like this. And we're all White Sox fans here, so the ball is going to go really far. <laughs> mm. And we're leaving. OK, so here's 60 degrees. Ball's moving at 40. Let's draw a nice four. 40 meters per second. And it's going to make some trajectory through the air. And land at the same height that it took off. Okay? I want to know how far the ball flew. In other words, I want to know what is this distance. In other words, I want to know, I want to know the range, just because we can. So this is, this is referred to as the range. What is the range? My goodness. <clears throat> OK, so that's a sort of lingo that I don't, doesn't really matter, but that's sort of lingo. So if I ever ask you what is the range, I mean the horizontal distance. OK? Uh, and so that's what we're after here. So what I want you guys to do is jump into your group. Since you're freezing, you might as well stand up and go do this on the chalkboard. All right, so uh, I've drawn a picture ready for you. I've labeled my axis x and y as usual. Now the next step is going to be making a list of what I know and what I don't. The hardest part of the whole thing. I'm just going to go ahead and just start writing things. So I'm after stuff like, uh, let's give myself a little bit more room. So I need to know x. I need to know xo. I need to know vxo. I need to know vx. I might need to know these things. AX, um, that's it for X. In the Y direction, I'm going to have similar sorts of things. And then time is going to be the same. OK, so X, the distance, X is D. That's the thing I'm after here. So I don't know what that is. X naught, I get to pick X naught in this example. It's going to be 0. So I'm going to put my origin. I feel like everybody had that written. Seems like everybody had that written down that way. Uh, velocity in the x initial, velocity x final. Right? Need to know those two. I don't know them yet, right? because I was given this velocity, which is at some angle. But I don't know. I don't know the velocity in the x direction yet. Acceleration in the x direction. What's that? All right. Projectile motion. Acceleration in the x direction is zero. Okay. That's a key. Key thing you're going to want to know. Because on an exam or in the homework, if I say projectile motion, I'm not going to explicitly say that the acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero. That's something you need to know. Okay? So that's important. Let's take a look at these velocities, though, or these, uh, these speeds, x speeds. All right? How do I get those? All right, I want, I want, the, vector com I want the components of my vector velocity. So I'm given a vector 40 meters per second. It's at some angle. You can. 60 degrees. So we've already done this. We've already broken up a vector into its components. Forget that it's velocity. Forget anything. It's just a vector. I need to break it up into its components. So I'm going to draw the same picture I've drawn several times now. I'm going to make a right triangle. And I need to solve for these red, the lengths of these red things. All right, the length of this one 
is 40 times the sine of 60, which is, if I look at somebody's work, 34.6. meters per second. The length of this guy is 40 times the cosine of 60, which is just 20 meters per second. All right? It's just a vector. You could ignore that it's a velocity or whatever. All right? But remember, whenever we're dealing with these 2D problems, you're always going to have to break up your vectors into components. So this is the first little tricky bit, making sure that you were able to do that. And you should have written down here 40 meters per second. And then if I take a look at this and I take a look at this, I can come up with my final velocity. The speed isn't changing in the x direction. There's no acceleration, which means that this is constant. I'm sorry, that's not 40, that's 20. This is 20. So there's no change in the speed in the x direction. So that remains constant. I look at this and I say, OK, I don't really know anything in the x direction because all I have is this number and a bunch of zeros. And I can't get much if I don't have two different numbers. So I already know that in order, in order to find this thing, I need more information. That information's got to be time. So I, st I look at this problem and I'm like, OK, I need time to get the information I want in the x direction, which means I'm going to have to go back and solve the y direction. All right. So let's do that. Why and why not? Well, initially, it's going to be 0. And now I have a choice. I have a choice here. I can choose to say y final is 0 if I want, or I can choose to not care about y final. I'm going to choose to not care. All right, I'm going to choose to not care because I think it's a little bit easier. And the reason it's easier is because I know my, I know my initial y velocity. It's 34.6. Right? And because I chose not to care up here, then I know my final velocity is 0. Because what I've done is I said, I'm going to say that we're stopping at the peak of the tra trajectory. And the time it takes to get to the peak is exactly 1 half the time it takes to get all the way back down to the ground. Right? So if I solve my y equation for tp, then I know that time total is just 2 times tp. All right, time peak is why that's a P. The last piece of information I know is that my acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, it's a projectile, so in the vertical direction, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. All right, so assign your, assign your sign appropriately. In this case, I chose up to be positive, which means my acceleration is negative. All right, so I've got a bunch of information here, which means I can solve for time. So in the y direction, then, I have an equation. And I know my initial velocity. I know my final velocity. I know an acceleration. So the equation that I would choose is vy is equal to vy initial plus the acceleration times the time. And this time, again, is time peak. It's t sub p. All right? I know that my final velocity is 0, so then I can get my time simply by subtracting my initial velocity, which is 34.6, dividing by gravity, or my acceleration due to gravity. Notice that I have two negative signs here. That's really good. Negative times are generally bad. All right. So that's really good because this one became negative because I moved it to the other side of the equation. This one was negative for my definition. So I'm happy about that. I can check my units. Meters cancel out meters. One of these seconds cancel out with the other ones. I get seconds in the numerator, so I'm good there. If you solve for that, you get a time of 7.07, I think, seconds, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. My fault. Thank you. 3.5, you said? Three, yeah, it's about 3.5 something. 3.5 seconds. Sorry. So that's t peak. Whoop. All right, but I want time total. I need time total for the x direction because I'm after this total distance. I'm not after the halfway distance. I mean, I guess I could solve for halfway and multiply by 2. Either way you want to do it, I'm going to use time total. Time total is equal to 7.07 seconds. That's what's in my notes because I kept significant figures. So that's my time total.
2 times t peak. All right. Now I turn to the, the x direction and I can solve for the x position using that equation we've used numerous times now. x is equal to x naught plus vx o times time plus 1 half ax times squared. I always write out the full equation just to beat it into your head. Um, even though our acceleration is zero here, I'm just reminding you that the four equations are the ones you need to remember. They'll work no matter what the case, as long as acceleration is constant. Zero is a constant. Remember that equation. Initial position is zero. So I can solve for x, which is what I'm after. That's equal to my initial velocity, which is 20 meters per second times time. 7.0. 7 seconds. And then that's it. If I solve for that, I get, uh, what do I get? 141 meters. All right, so 141 meters, roughly 464 feet. Sounds like a home run to me. 